Hello, hello, and welcome to the dungeon. Dum dum dum. dum. <laughs> Episode number seven. Seven. Lucky number oh. seven. And that's what in, in Papamento. Shit. <laughs> There's a lot of shit in your dialogue. <laughs> a lot of shit. A lot of shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just thought you the, the the ones that I like. I like talking about butts and everything that comes out of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Shete. Um so now you know Shete Batimang. Batimang. In Jamaica we Banca. say seven. 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 Yep. All right. So, <laughs> what was this week like for you ever since the last podcast dropped? Uh, you didn't think I was going to ask that question. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a, it was a, well, personally, for me, you don't know. Like, work, work, work. But for pertaining to the podcast, it's good because. Like people get to see the uh, the, the unveiling of the of the shirt mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and we got we got artists in, and we got a few promises to 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 purchase and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but but uh, separate and apart from that, the conversation. I mean, funny enough, I haven't got any any. You know, no. Normally, after every podcast, I would send you messages I get and stuff yes. like that. Like I haven't received any of this. <laughs> yeah, where are the people at? Hello, crickets. <laughs> I got, I got, I got one request to do. Like someone right. said, you know, you know that vice dippings you sent. Yeah. I posted it on my status, and someone said, I want to listen to this. <laughs> oh, just the voice clippings. <laughs> I said, I said the person that so. That person, I'm sure I'll hear back from soon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, it was a good week overall. What about you? Um, For me, it has been pretty quiet on my end. Like, I've heard from the people. Actually, no. I had an interesting conversation yesterday with a friend of mine who I didn't even know. I sent her the podcast, but I didn't even know she listened. And she's like, I really love this. I love the conversations. I love how raw it is. And I'm learning so much about it. And she is originally from um, República Dominicana. Okay. And she was saying that, you know, we were talking about owning and loving our culture as is and not allowing ourselves to be whitewashed, but more so like unwhitewashing ourselves because I think we're we're all whitewashed to some degrees you know um, yeah. even the school system whitewashes your way of thinking yeah, yeah. So, well, that's yeah. where it began yes yeah like we were even you and I had this conversation briefly on you know just how we just learn about Columbus and all these people that quote unquote discovered our land. <laughs> like yeah. that in itself is problematic. They yeah. didn't discover it. It was already there and it was already there bumping and grinding and thriving with the people that lived there. Yeah. They just didn't see them as people or regarded them as anything. So they killed them off. <laughs> they were, they were corrupt. They were, yeah. they were, in Jamaica, we say bad mind because you come and you see a people living life, striving, happy, and you want what they have. Yeah. And so the only way to take it is to kill them. Yes. Yes. And so I'm reading this book, Deconstructing the Mind, and not deconstructing, <laughs> decolonizing the mind. And it's a really thick book and very complicated, but I love it and I'm taking my time with it. But anyway, something he says in that is like, they had to write history that way to make Columbus a hero. That's why there's over 300 stat statues of Columbus around the world 
when in reality he was a criminal, <laughs> a thief, yeah. a human trafficker, all yeah. these things. <laughs> all in the name of Spain. Yeah, yeah. Anarchy of Spain. Um, Columbus is a bad, bad man. Uh, um, so we have some more, I think it's a good news, you know, we are like about that Norway thing. <laughs> you know, you want to you 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 share? Yeah, we Shout have listeners Norway. in Norway now. And then I got this email from this statistics place that was like, we are ranked number 112 under the category of personal journals in Norway. Like, how random is that? 112. I mean, that's good if, 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 if the ranking is, if the the number is like a million. Yeah, know? I don't know. I don't know how many there are. If, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's 115, it's not good. <laughs> I know, but at least that means we are people are listening in Norway. Yeah, we are ranked. And Denmark. We are the shout, out, shout out to Denmark. We, yeah. we just got to Denmark on the yeah, we got people platform. in Denmark, in France, in UK, like all these places that I'm like, interesting, right? And, and obviously and our loyal people from the US and Jamaica and Curacao, which is like, and Canada, the top places that people are listening from. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to, to all the nations who, who are listening. But but, yeah. but interestingly, like, It stems back to why one for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Only we are, because we have like, it's a it's a it's a mix culture of people that represent so I you know, from all yeah, over. Yeah, true. I mean, our classes there were people from like in my DTS there were people from like a few different countries. Yeah, yeah. And so those people. Like migrate, like it, it's like why I think why one play a very, very, very is playing a very important part in, in this. I feel like why one has made the world smaller for me, smaller, smaller, yeah, in a good way, like smaller in some ways and bigger in other ways. Smaller in the way of like, I feel like for a lot of people, they feel like, oh, that's that far away land that I may never reach in my lifetime. But then, like, you know, like for you, you've been to China. I've been to Cambodia. I've literally been to every single continent except Australia and Antarctica, you know? So mm. the world to me is like, I can just decide and go. But at the same time, it makes the world big in the sense of every single culture group is so unique and so interesting. And it's important to me to look at the people and respect them and respect their culture and all of that. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, then there's a lot why, of those. <laughs> that's why I like, I like traveling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's the notion of stepping out of your comfort zone and stepping yeah. into the unknown. Especially yeah. when you go to places where, you know, like they don't speak your language yeah so yeah. so your mind now you see you know how very vast and 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 just i take your brain is your mind actually is because mm. you have to navigate you have to you understand and stuff like that and i mean instantaneously you you think you're you're going to into overdrive get a translator get a tour guide you know like mm -hmm. you start going into survival mood you know like start learning you know start learning and start learning so yeah I, I, that's the that's the part of traveling that i really do like um, learning different culture and people i would like to point out though that that is not how majority people travel <laughs> no no, like, no we no, think no. of it that way and i think it's very important to me to travel the way we're describing right now where you're getting to know the people you're getting to know the culture you're getting to know all those things but a lot of people they just go on vacation and I feel yeah. like there's a difference between traveling and vacation because vacation is like in a hotel, Airbnb, all inclusive, 
you don't deal with no local, local. you go to all the tourist hot spots and then you go home and say that was a really great vacation but in many ways that is a form of colonization too which i don't know if i don't really want to get into <laughs> because like Right. Let yeah, us know me. if you want us get it. Let us know if you want us to get into that. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember visiting a leper colony, and you know, leprosy from the Bible in biblical time was like a mm -hmm. psh, a death a death sentence. Yeah, like that. That's that's a you get that you are outcast by family, friends, society. So we visited the actual leper colony, and in China, yeah, I got off the bus wow. and. And instantaneously, I'm like, no. <laughs> run. <laughs> run. <laughs> okay, oh, they didn't, they didn't tell us that we're going into a leper colony and stuff like that. But then I remember, I'm like, Psh. that was like in biblical times. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we have modern medicine. We have antibiotics. You know, we have, mm -hmm. you know, like, like we, are, <laughs> we are, we are living in the future in modern times. So. What was like a death sentence then may not not necessarily be that now, and so I have to I have yeah. to reinforce myself to go and just just greet and share and, and speak with the people, and and most of the people there it's funny like they didn't have lepers. Oh, it's like you get a cut, and because because that that fear culture that that fear that that thing of fear, uh -huh. they probably just throw them out. You understand? Wow throw them into the colony and sometimes it's just a, a, a cut that needs to be treated yeah, yeah yeah but it's interesting too that fear you know because i was um when we were going to uganda we had a lot of training on hiv and what what that entailed because we were going to a place that was heavy with that happening and they tell you many things and i remember one day i had a small ass cut on my finger and I gave somebody a hand that I then, after giving them the hand, realized that they had a, a small cut too. And I freaked yeah. out. <laughs> I yeah. didn't like freaked out for other people to know, but I freaked out on the inside. Yeah, yeah. And then I just had to calm myself down. Like, <laughs> that's that's not how it fast, like there was no exposure of blood or anything yeah. like that. But I can imagine if you're in that fear culture just like I had it, if you maximize it instead of minimize it like I did, then yes, you would get rid of people. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real, for real. Yeah. Man. And I do not have HIV. I got tested after I got raped and I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> but yo, I had to take, um, I think it's HIV blocking pills until they could actually test me. It's like two times a day on the clock you got to take these things and it gave me like the worst how do you say this in english like acid like acid, acid reflux what? i think yeah, yeah, yeah i think that's the translation yeah man acid reflux really bad really bad and i had to take those i think for two weeks uh. anyways let's get into the topic right what, yep. We were going to talk about more about Andy Dandy Cross. <laughs> I act as if your last name is Dandy, but that is a nickname <laughs> that I gave you. <laughs> uh, I know, you know, you know, you know, people start calling me that now, Andy Dandy. I'm like, that's reserved for Shay. She's, you're the old, you're the old, <laughs> but it's good. It's getting, it's getting out. The people that I mean, listen to the podcast call me Shay now too. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. So what but, what do you want to do? Let me let me shoot. Yes. So you say you grew up in a garrison community, which at first I didn't even know what that meant. But it is a ghetto. <laughs> the yeah. projects, right? How would you describe growing up there? To somebody that has no idea what it's like um like me I well i, I only know because i've been there but <laughs> I, I i wouldn't have known prior <laughs> i didn't even knew what it was 
until I started getting exposure, mm. you know, because it, to me, it was a norm. Yeah, yeah. To me, it was a norm, like, to see and experience stuff, you know. I didn't even know that I was poor until, yeah. until um, we started getting, like, in cable television and stuff like that, and we started seeing um, um, just Other programs lifestyle. from... Yeah, 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 yeah. What, watching Disney Channel and stuff like that. And oh, mall, that, that's a big thing. Like seeing certain things on television is like, man, that's a reality somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I started going to, because I went to a primary school that's very close to my community. Mm -hmm. And it's still like garrison. You yeah. understand? Yeah, yeah. So when I started going to a high school that's in Kingston 20, because I'm originally from Kingston 11 in the mm -hmm. Three Miles area. And Kingston 20 is in like doing a park, that area where my school, my high school was. And then. Is that near yeah, New Kingston? Like, no, is it no, that no, no, far? No. Uh -huh. no, 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 no. That's going up like the boulevard, going, going closer to like. Spanish tour, going closer to St. Catherine, going out of Kingston. Okay. Um, um, so I started seeing kids from different places that's not from <laughs> any of those communities I'm from and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I started making friends with a few of these kids and see how they live in different shoes to school, Nike here, and stuff like that. Jordan, that I'm like, what? Like shit after wear these tunnels. <laughs> you had you have a you have a, a, a you you had a a factory that made shoe right in three miles area called Tanners, where uh -huh. my mom used to take me there to buy a shoe and it's literally made of rubber. Uh -huh. And and you have to walk with that in the sun at your feet is gonna burn <laughs> and you can smell the rubber. <laughs> Yeah. They could smell me coming from a mile out. Oh, Andy's coming. <laughs> Were you the only one that had tanner shoes? Um, no. Okay, I mean, so in, my, in, 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 my, in, my, in my in my primary school, no. But but as I said, as I get exposed to, to high school and see different yeah. things, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, and so... And so, but, but growing up in, in, in Majestic Garden was, was, was fun. Yeah, I can it imagine. It was, it was fun, man. Like, it was so much fun. Like, we, we, we played games. My, my friends and I, we would mustard, like, cook, run boats together. We weren't hungry. Cook, Even run boats? Even run boat meaning we cook. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We cook, yeah, we are gonna run about. We are gonna we are gonna cook some food. We are gonna cook some food, you know. Uh -huh. Even if our parents, our parents like didn't couldn't provide food for the night. Like me and my friends would just run boats, you know. And yeah. then and then I, I I I got into basketball. How I got into basketball is a mystery. Like I remember being at school one day and because I'm a primary school, I don't know nothing about these things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I love that nothing. It's just track and field. I mean, in Jamaica, like we are accustomed to track and field, mm -hmm. arse racing, arse racing, um, netball, um, cricket, and yeah. soccer. And soccer. Those were like the yeah. five main sports, mm -hmm. like in Jamaica. And so, when I uh, it being in my high school now, I saw the kids playing. And, and, a, and a whoop or rim thing like a netball thing but it's it has a backboard and it's not netball like that's mm -hmm. not a netball rim and I see them dribbling and shooting and a friend of mine by the name of Alistair I remember him clearly like they were picking a team one day <laughs> and, and I was the last one left after everybody picked and he was like come and I couldn't do nothing with the ball so they used to call me ear drunker you know what a drunker is? You know what a drunker is in Jamaica? No. It's like a vulture. A vulture. <laughs> That's why I was flopping around. Uh, air drunker, give air drunker the ball. <laughs> and so what air drunker did, 
after being called a junkie. Like I took that challenge, I took it personal. Mm. And so I learned the game one step at a time. I used to search dust. When I got the ball, I couldn't dribble, so I shoot three pointers. Yeah. Shoot three pointers, shoot three pointers. And so they would give me the ball and I'll just shoot the three. Mm-hmm. And and I'm accustomed to shoot it because <laughs> <laughs> Because you were I, I'm That's a part of a I'm coming from a shooting culture, man. I say I know where shooting. When you say shoot, I know what that means. <laughs> you either you run, <laughs> run. <laughs> so, and then I started dribbling and stuff like that. And then my game just came together. But growing up in in Majestic Garden was fun. Like it was, it it was, uh, it was, it was poor. It was grimy. Looking back now. Uh-huh. No kid, no one should grow up in, in an environment like that. And there's yeah. a lot of environments, community like that in Jamaica and, and around the world, you know, but yeah, yeah, you're exposed to things as a, as a, as a youth that you have no, no reason being exposed to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I heard two white kids i was talking to two white kids and i and i say that because i think it's interesting too um they were like i was saying something about their mom said something about shadiest friend from jamaica probably because we were talking about the podcast or something Mm. and they were like oh have you been to jamaica i was like yeah they were they were like oh there's a lot of gangs there and i was like okay (laughs) because it's interesting and i wonder your your point of view because my point of view is this one who's teaching these kids is jamaica only has gangs in it and two um that's not the truth no like i love to see all of it you know the whole entirety and i don't neglect one side but I don't neglect the bad, but I don't neglect the good either. So, like, what's do, your point of view on that? Do you know that there are more gangs in <clears throat> in Chicago? Oh yeah, of course. In California, than than the, in, that's two states. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> than than Jamaica and all. Yeah, you know, yeah. So to answer your question about who's who's spreading these things about Jamaica is is Jamaicans. We spread it. You understand? It's what we let out. Information. Mm-hmm. The information we let out, like. In the States, funny, like, well, Jamaica, we only have, like, we had only two dominant um, um, news outlets, mm-hmm. television-wise, and then on the radio, you have a few more. But yeah. that's it for the entire nation. That's it for the entire country. You understand? Mm-hmm. Just those, those few limited, like, like media mediums that, that send out information. Mm-hmm. And so... Every negativity that happens, boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. I've seen the it's news, going, the night media in Jamaica. Yeah, it's going out there. It's going out there. It's going out there. Not so when I, when I come to the States, like in New York, you have a different news system from what's in Miami, from what's in Washington, from what's in. Yeah. So what happens in Miami or some part in Miami, you may necess- not necessarily know. Unless it's a national public thing, you understand? Mm-hmm. You may not necessarily know. So it's the information we let out. We got to start letting out. And and we were talking earlier, and I, I said to you, like, I believe there's more good happening than bad, but it's just what people are feeding, buying into. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. propaganda spreading is a part of making money. Like, yeah. and and nations do that shit too, you know? It's the, it's the information we send out. And now with the, with the, with the, with the, the, with the with the space of, of YouTube and and, and, and and the internet and stuff like that, it's even worse. It's so if we we sending out these messages, man. We got to start sending out good things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I but, wonder... but, yeah. but sorry, but in relating to the gang stuff, like you're right, that that that, that that's a reality. That's true. We do have a lot of gangs in Jamaica. We do have a lot of of youths with 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 with. We have a violence of 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 crime, killing, murder, bloodshed, 
and it is stemming from even the slave pandemics, uh, like like um, Pan America, um, the Pan Transatlantic slave. You yeah. understand, like yeah. where the bad, the real bad. They, they would say they they would call us the real bad slaves. Were thrown to the Caribbean, like <laughs> like the Trinidad, Jamaica, mm. Haiti, Cuba, and stuff like that, like. You, you know how much like the sugar harvesting. We were colonized by England, by yeah. Britain. And and sugar was one of their main um source of wealth. Mm -hmm. Sugar cane was grown in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much people die? For that sugar cane? Just 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 cutting the cane or or just clearing clearing the land. To plant new crop and stuff like that, it fire like cash cane. It's dry, it's dry, especially when it's dried. When you put when fire cane that in a man, it spreads like rapidly. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people like a lot of people just burn up in the cold, just burned, mm -hmm. so that other people can have wealth and their families can live. And those are the same ones now, looking down and saying, "Oh, there's a lot of." Crime and certain stuff in that in in in, the, in that section of the world. You know what? Like, thanks to y'all. I'm glad you brought that up because that's literally what I was gonna say. You know, like, I think, um, Jamaica in particular, but I would take this even further of like, the Caribbean and countries that have been colonized, is they have put a stamp of, a lot of different shitty stereotypes on the countries and the peoples of those countries right and then we believe them yeah that's i think really fucked up because we gotta stop believing this shit the more we believe it the more we re regurgitate it the more we continue saying it the more we continue living it and we gotta stand up and say Hey, I'm not going to continue being these labels that you've placed on me. Yeah. And we've even had this conversation um, once with somebody, you and I with somebody yeah. else yeah. who was yeah. saying, you know, I come from a third world country. I'm like, these are labels people put on us. Yeah. They've decided. First of all, <laughs> they raped, steal, stole, um, trafficked, did whatever the fuck they wanted with these countries. Then they created a ranking system and said, oh, y'all at the bottom. <laughs> y'all yeah. number three, <laughs> right? <laughs> out of out of three. So yeah. it's like, okay, if I believe you and say, hey, I'm number three. I'm going to stay number three forever. I'm number three. There's no, there's, you there's can, no, yeah, there's no, because there's no I've been moving hearing, from I've there. Been hearing, I've been hearing, you're right, because I've been hearing we are a third world country from when I was a kid. <laughs> from when I was a kid, when are we going to go second and first? <laughs> like, do you know what's, do you know what's interesting about that? <laughs> Here, what I heard is, we are not first and we're not third. We don't know where we are. Because, by the way, second is supposed to be um, commu communist countries. So yeah. first is like the basically only the colonizers. Second is communism. And third is basically all the co countries they've stolen yeah, yeah. in order for them to be number one. <laughs> so... For us, it was like, oh, we're not number three and we're not number one either. So it's interesting because here, very rarely are we referred to as a third world country. And I think that also has impacted how we think about things. Yeah. Because I believe that collective thinking changes things. Like Curacao has not had a hurricane since 18... 80 or 70 something which is, which because is, which we is, don't which is believe my, it can happen here which is my which is my blogger into me like a, you're you're, yeah. you're in the Caribbean yes. and a Curacaoan will tell you chest up saying we're outside of the hurricane belt which is not true we're in it 
we just have a 10% chance of a hurricane happening here. But because of your belief. Even that, ain't, because, that, even that ain't happening. Yeah. Because of our beliefs. And because, I because, should continue because believing because I'm like, yes, we don't get a hurricane. Naturally, as you stated to me um, some time ago, that Curacao is more humid than Jamaica. <laughs> like, so, yeah. and you, where eat is concerned, that like, so 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 you you should you, you should be like at a high percentage of getting a hurricane than Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. But it's the belief, it's the mind, you know, it's mine. All right. All right. Like, do you know there's this thing happening now in the African seas, like where Somalia, the pirates of Somalia, you know, mm-hmm. you know that you know how those those paddles, gangs of pirates was 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 started? Do you no, know tell me. Because um, these European ships from these first world countries, that like these ships would come out, out they waste, out they get rid of their their waste, gas, chemical, and stuff like that. It's in the seas mm-hmm. surrounding Somalia and other and other African countries. Now, these pirates know that these people, fishermen, who was who are stigmatized as being pirates now, we're fishermen. They are fishermen. Mm-hmm. No, and they couldn't they fish no more. Food. Yeah, they can't be able to fish no more because waste, chemical waste is being dumped, killing the fishes and stuff like that. They have to survive. They are seeing their, their women and their kids starving and hunger. So let's 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 patrol like we are we have a patrol, Coast Guard patrol. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. It's in it, Jamaica, it, it's every day should have that. So that's what they do. You know what? They used to kidnap people and see that, like, we need a ransom. They see yeah. how much money they're making. They don't, they no longer want to fish. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, like, indirectly, they're the ones who started that shit. You understand? Mm-hmm. By not respecting other people and their livelihood. And, and they have been doing that for years and centuries and centuries and hundreds of years, you know? They feel like they are on top of the food chain. They can do what the fuck ever they want to yeah, people. And when without people consequences. Retali- yeah, when people retaliate, I'm not condoning violence, but we have to start thinking about um um, um motives. What caused something to happen? B is to exist. Cause is to set into motion. Because mm-hmm. you did this, I have to do this for my survival. You understand? Yeah, but that's that's why racism exists too. It's like, if a white person, if if a, the stories are told differently, right? If literally it was the Africans were dumping things near European or American shores, <laughs> and then yeah. they would be savages. And if the American yeah. fishermen attacked them back or European, they would be doing right and just yeah, because right, that's how it is. And these savages are dumping their shit in our waters and we need to protect our waters and nature and all this stuff. But when they do it, it's like, no, we, we're we just doing business. We're pirates. And, and it's the same with Jamaica and the Caribbean. Yes, exactly. Same with Jamaica and the Caribbean. When, when, when people are like Jamaica don't manufacture guns, yo. Yeah, that, that. We don't manufacture guns. You touch, you touch early on, and and just the, the the thing that's happening in eighty now, the uprising in eighty. Mm-hmm. Man, well, I might, I could be wrong. I can't speak specifically about eighty, but I can say this about Jamaica: we don't manufacture guns in Jamaica. I don't know if they're doing eighty, but we don't manufacture no, guns. No, they in don't. Jamaica. They don't. That's why I told you about Haiti. You've said that before. And they've said that about Haiti. And I was like, this makes, I've never thought about that. So have you seen, have you seen the kind of guns those, 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 those so-called rebels are carrying are, are in, in Haiti? No, I haven't. Those are US made guns. Yeah, of course. Of course. But do you also, I've also heard this. They've been portraying this guy, um, Barbecue, oh. who's like Mr. Gang Leader or whatever. They've been saying he's a cannibal, and they ha- they're cannibalistic people. I'm like, well, how fucking racist is that? For, for every every nation, we are we we are we have been considered cannibals too. What? Not in not in terms of literally 
it's the stigma, not that in terms of literally mm-hmm. eating flesh. I, 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 I'm gonna say that in their defense, but just yeah. the just the notion of those people are cannibals. They're not just just just, just the thought, the idea, of, or they're liking to be like we are. We derive from apes, <laughs> like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we derive from apes and stuff like that. Just just even the thought of that is is. I mean, we we are like dirt at the bottom of their feet. Yeah. Except um, when you make music or you run track and field or I'm still, you do something. I'm still shit. I'm still. True, I'm true. still. Because when you make I'm music, sure. look, at, look at Bob Marley. Look at Bob Marley. Bob Marley is now the post of child for, for, for tourism in Jamaica across the world. Mm-hmm. You know? You, you, you know the story of Rastafarism back in the 70s, uh, in the mm-hmm. 70s what mm-hmm. they went through. You understand? They were, they were, they were, they were until they were killed, they were locked up in, in jail for a long period of time because of their appearances. Yeah. They're here. And now, that same cannibal, black art man looking individual is the poster boy for Jamaica National yeah. Tourist Board across the world. Yep. And they don't share the ugly, right? Because the only no. reason I know that, you know, the rest of our eyes were persecuted is literally something that I learned this year, reading a book, um, How to Say Babylon by Sophia Sinclair, which is a beautiful, amazing book. Um, that's how I found out. I didn't even know what rest of our eye culture was. I just knew it was like, cool. <laughs> like, I yeah. remember saying black, gold, and green when I was little. And my dad's saying, no, we don't say that. Um, <laughs> but I don't know where it came from. It, I, I guess it was something kids said that it was cool and they like had the colors, but nobody knew what it actually meant. It was just like cool, which okay, is so- literally, wait a minute, even though we're black, that's also cultural appropriation because we're just yeah. saying something and just saying, oh, that's cool. That's nail on the head right there, Shay. Yeah. Yeah. And people, but 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 for all these things, people, it it's it goes back if you trace these things, it, it's gonna lead to a fat bank account somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it, you know, it's everything is about making money for somebody else. But I also wonder the fact that Bob Marley was light skinned and half black, half white, how much that played a role in everything. Too. Yeah, it did. It, I think it did for, uh, 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 in terms of his popularity. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think it does play a role. If, if that was an all English man, it, I, w- I would be biased to say it didn't because mm-hmm. when you compare his music to even a Peter touch, Peter touch is more deep, deep and more, Cultural than Bob Marley. Hmm. If you ask many people, they would agree with that statement. You understand? Yeah. I don't want to even go into that. You understand? But but you're right. I think, I, in my opinion, it does play a part. But now let's look at a Usain Bolt. Because mm-hmm. you're saying, like, like, because you say, you said, un- unless you do music or track, or look at a Usain Bolt. That guy has given his every literal thing for Jamaica. Yeah. He still lives in Jamaica, still pay taxes in Jamaica. If 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 someone if if someone wants to do business with him, they got to come to Jamaica so that that money, that tax and stuff like that can go to the country. Mm-hmm. Over like a, almost like a year and, and sometime last year they stole like two billion dollars from him. Huh? His money was in the in the bank. And then it just went not. <laughs> it wasn't there, no boy. <laughs> a, a Jamaican bank, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got that part. And it's and Jamaica. They, and, two billion and, Jamaicans, and, right? Two billion, two billion. Yeah, two billion Jamaican, not million. Billion, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. From Usain Bolt. A guy who put Jamaica literally on his That's back. That's sad. That's it sad. It's, it's not just about the money. It's like, yeah, it's not about the money. That don't like, shake him. You know, but that's that's a hero. It's it's 
pretty similar to stealing from like Bob Marley, you know. That, but that's what they're doing to Bob happened. Marley. Now. Which that's has happened. Doing, that's what they're doing to Bob Marley now. Maybe, maybe not True. the stealing, but they're they're bandwagonists now. They're jumping on this board now, especially with the the premiere of his movie the other day. Like you mm-hmm. see all political officials at the premiere and stuff like that. And people, you are hypocrites, man. But those who know, know. You understand? And that's why we need more platform, like even the dungeon, to yeah. even speak out and stuff like these things. You understand? These people are hypocrites. These people are just riding on our way. They don't mean the people no good. They don't mm-hmm. mean us no good. It's just showing faces for them. Yeah, yeah. People well, need to start speaking, man. We didn't even get to finish your story. Okay, yeah, because there's a lot of... All we know is you went to high school with a stinky (laughs) issue. And and, and, and being called ear junk girl. And and so, and and the first time, well, uh, so the first time I actually, I don't don't think it was love, but something I saw used to saw on television, like where a guy would kiss a girl and, and stuff like that. There was this girl, man, jeez, I remember her up to this day. <laughs> I felt butterflies in my stomach. I'm sick and I'm not sick. Why am I not feeling? Why don't why don't I want to eat? Like <laughs> so, that was the first time I had that experience. <laughs> and and so and so yeah, but but no, yeah, like in Majestic Garden, man, like as I said, it was a fun, like a beautiful community mm-hmm. until exposure creeped in. And then I know that, nah, <laughs> this ain't yeah. beauty. Okay. So, so church now, I used to, I used to, as I said, I was, I was on the let's, verge of it. Go ahead. Let's, Let's continue with this church thing, and then we'll have to continue this on the on the next episode, because otherwise we'll go on for five hours. <laughs> okay. 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 So to continue Andy's story, you gotta listen to the next episode. But yeah, go about the church thing. How you get so, into church? <laughs> so no, this is my this is my um sojourning out of Majestic Garden and in, and to just being exposed in. Like, and and that and, and and going to church was 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 one of the biggest blessings that ever happened to me because mm-hmm. I used to be a I used to be a part of as as I said just the basketball team down there I was like one of the best players at a time at yeah. one time and stuff like that and so that comes with a lot of I mean girls and stuff like that and a lot of so called popularity but <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't. After after a game, after I finished playing basketball, I used to go home and I would read. Like, while the other guys would be out hanging out and stuff like that, and I'd, I'd go home and read. And I, I didn't feel like th- th- that was it. I was getting older. Mm-hmm. As I said, I was coming from work one day. I look over the field and I saw some, some youth who was like kids when I was started playing. They are now big and playing. They used to come and, <laughs> and watch me and, and I'm like, whoa, if they are grown. I'm getting older. I can't do this forever. And yeah. so I was already in my mind, I was looking for a way out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the church was that. You understand? Um, the church was that for me. And then through the church, I got, I got like affiliated with YWAM. Mm-hmm. And, that, and then from YWAM, as I said before, YWAM is a huge blessing. And so I don't want people to even get it twisted when, when we speak about your experience at YWAM because yeah, it's yeah. like bittersweet for me. It was like bittersweet for me. I met my wife there and stuff like that. And and then to the world, from Jamaica to the world. And yeah. and, and, and just, just speaking with you now is part of that blessing, part of that sweet, you understand? Because yeah. a friendship was made and and it's forged now in 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 cement and steel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With Shay 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 Shay, I'm speaking about the friendship with you, girl. Gee. Yeah, I know, I know, I get it, I get it. I I was just pondering. I'm like, that's deep. It's cemented in steel. <laughs> that's what oh, I was. Like. True, man. Yeah, it's true. true. It's true. I mean, you I, I, you literally can't say anything. You know more about me than anybody else, and you don't know much about me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so can you imagine anybody else? <laughs> Andy is a mystery. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll, I'll I'll let people know what I want them to know. I mean, it's part of my protection, you know. So, I actually want to have an entire conversation on that, but maybe okay. next episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, do you feel good to end it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Anything yeah, yeah. else you want to say? I okay. mean, people, listen. Norway, Denmark, welcome Denmark. I mean, we are continuous speaking to nations. And yeah. the nations are listening and they're speaking back. Thanks for the for the comments, for the for for the for for just your opinion and just topics you want us to touch on and stuff like that. We appreciate everyone who listen. If it's even for a short period of time, we appreciate you, and we mm-hmm. encourage you to keep listening and keep growing with us. We are building a community. Yeah, and you're yeah. a part have, of that community. We have mad plans coming up. Obviously, the shirt is up for sale. You get that on the on the link on the website. Um, the subscribe, stay tuned. We're we're doing mad things. Mad things about to happen. And it also, reach out to us personally or leave a comment on Spotify. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Um leave comments on youtube wherever you're listening we read all of them and we love getting your feedback because it's not just us coming up with stuff your feedbacks feed into what we talk about here so it's a we create together yeah yeah we create together yeah it's powerful right (laughs) it sounds like a slogan for an airline somehow (laughs) that's what i picture (laughs) well copyright listen copyright go into the lab and copyright that shit (laughs) you heard it here first (laughs) yes we create together (laughs) all right much love to you all and we'll see you on the next one bye peace out